Welcome to Ethical Hacking for Beginners, Exploit and Sniffing. In this section, we're going to take a look at Metasploit Basics, Exploiting a Vulnerability, Armitage, Aircrack NG, Man in the Middle Attack, Social Engineering Toolkit, and finally, Working with Wireshark, Metasploit Basics. In this video, we're going to take a look at what is Metasploit and some basic commands to use for Metasploit. So first of all, what is Metasploit? Metasploit is an open source framework for exploits. What is an exploit? Usually it's code to take advantage of a flaw in a system or a program. This is what happens during a pen test when you try to penetrate a network or a host. And you can get more information by going to this website, www.metasploit.com, where you'll find a free download. It runs on Windows as well as Linux. And there's lots of information I encourage you to check out here. So let's look at some basic commands. Slash etc slash init.d slash post gresql start starts the database. MSF console will start up Metasploit in any terminal window. Once you're in Metasploit, question mark can be used to show commands. Help or help command will show help or detailed help for a command. Search and then a value you can use to search for payloads or modules. Use module name will load a module to use for an exploit. Info module name will show information about a module. Check is pretty useful. It will check if the target is vulnerable for that module. It's almost like a vulnerability scan sort of built into Metasploit. Show options will show the options that you may need to set for a module set and then the option that you want to set and then the value to set it to show payloads will display payload a payload is code to run after an exploit is ran In many cases it's code to run to open a shell from our target exploit which runs the exploit that you have chosen for a particular module and sessions will display active sessions Let's go ahead and look at some of these commands. So if you go to your Kali Linux VM, start it up if you haven't already done so. And you can also start up your Metasploitable virtual machine. So we'll begin with etc init d. And we will start up the database. Good. Now we will type MSF console to start Metasploit. You can start Metasploit without starting the database, but it's handy to have the database there in case you want to save your results. And here we are. We are into Metasploit, which has these fun banners. This one happens to be that session one died of dysentery. It looks like it's the Oregon Trail. I could type banner, which is a fun command, and I'll get different banners to come up. There's a ninja. Okay, so let's go ahead and type our question mark and enter. And this gives you a list of commands. So we have our core commands here. Question mark, which we just used as a help menu. Banner, which I already showed you, displays an awesome Metasploit banner. CD, change current working directory. Communicate with the host for connect. Exit. Some pretty self-explanatory commands here. And I encourage you to read the help on any commands you are not familiar with or would like to become more familiar with. Sessions, we mentioned that before. Set, set the context-specific variable to a valuable, to a value. And then we have some module commands on this way. Search, search as modules, there you go use a module then we have job commands basically you can start an exploit and run it as a job in the background while you issue other commands which is very handy and useful and then we have some database backend commands that's what I was talking about earlier when we started the uh, SQL database service we can import scan results from a vulnerability scanner this is handy along with various other handy commands. Alright, so let me go ahead and type help. 
we get that same same screen so let's go ahead and type help and a specific command so we'll say sessions and here is the help for the sessions command which it lists out all the options to use for sessions sessions.l lists all active sessions this is a command i use a lot of times and various other commands in here that we can use and here's an example of a of a command here sessions s run a script check if it's a vm that's their script they're using dash i one three or five or sessions k one two five and five and six okay so we can use search search and this is for to search various modules or exploits so let's say ftp for example so here is a listing of exploits that are in the ftp directory so the way this is mapped out is exploits are in directories in a directory structure according to os and then programs after that and then it tells you the date the rank a little description of it so you can see there's quite a few modules that have ftp in them so this is where our reconnaissance comes in where we want to see what program if we can find out what specific program a target is using then we can look in here for an exploit to use to launch against that particular target very handy so that's search we can do info and just grab one of these uh, modules so I'm just gonna grab a module for First, let me do a search for VSFTP. That's a specific FTP program. There you go, and we have an exploit right there. Here's the exploit listed for VSFTP, which stands for Very Secure FTP, which ironically it is not. So now if I type info and the module name, which is this, we'll get a little more information about this exploit. The name, the module, what platform it runs on which is unix and here's some of the options we can set our host which is the target address or remote host our port remote port the target port here's a little description of this module very handy and it's number and listing in the osv database very handy to use. Once again, this is where reconnaissance and scanning comes into play to be very important. You don't want to attack a target with uh, multiple exploits. It's very noisy and you're not guaranteed to get in. So you need to investigate for specific programs and their vulnerabilities. Okay, so let's go ahead and type use and we're going to use this module. Oh, not that. Use this guy which if i highlight and i middle mouse click it will paste it in there for me and you'll see now that our command prompt has changed to this module bs ftp module so we're in there so now if i type show options we see the options for this particular module which we saw in the info for that module and I can set options in here so I can set our host and then the value which is for me 192.168.111.128.128 it would be whatever your Metasploitable 2 address is and I hit enter and now if I do show options it will show me the current setting which is what I just set it to our Metasploitable 2 host very handy so let's do show payloads okay and our compatible payload with this module is a normal Unix command shell it looks like sometimes if you're if you're attacking a, a Windows host there'll be different options here 
Okay, and then let's just type sessions to show. Of course, we have no active sessions because we have not exploited anything. And uh, that will be coming up in our in our second video. So now we can type that check command. There you go. And see if our host is vulnerable. Apparently, not all modules do not support the check. And this is one of them. Interesting. We can also run a, a scan inside Metasploit and add it to the database, the results. So let's go ahead and run scan against our host right now. I'll just run a quick one with the default options, 192.168.111.128. You'll see we can run that. Blocking the probe, so we'll try this, 192.168. 111, 128. Wanted to make sure I had the right host address. Let's see, this command's taking a little bit longer. Okay, I apologize. My VM was set to a different network. So once I fixed that, I ran nmap inside of Metasploit. And you can see here it showing me the open ports for Metasploitable 2. And here's where we see FTP. And when we ran nmap earlier, in our reconnaissance phase, we found it was VS FTP. So in our next video, we're gonna go ahead and exploit a vulnerability.